Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you very much for joining this session. Uh, my name is David Taylor. I work for Lakeside Software. We manufacture and deliver to customers a digital experience management technology. And in today's session, we're going to explore some research that we've been doing, which has kind of really identified a digital divide. And it's this divide is in the in in the gap between what IT is delivering and what users are expecting from employee experience perspective. And, and we're going to dig into that. And that's been made even more uh, sort of top of mind because of the way in which we're working in a hybrid working world right now. Hybrid in that where some of us are working from home, some of us are working in the office, some of us are doing a bit of both. And it looks like that's going to carry on for a while. So we're going to explore that in a little bit more detail. First question really is, is why does digital employee experience matter? And you know, again, we looked at some, some research in the market and, and there are, uh, what we found is that organizations that have highly engaged employees, um, they typically experience uh, more kind of productivity, more annual working hours per employee because they're motivated and want to invest and are excited about being at the company. They're more productive, therefore they get more done and want to, want to do more. There's nearly 60% less employee turnover. That's a critical thing when you spend so much training employees up to be effective. So that drop is in turnover is a, is a huge bottom line improvement for an organization. And as a result of that, 21% improvement in profitability. So, and when you look at what makes an engaged employee, um, the research that we've seen shows that that's a technology and the digital experience is about 30% of their overall experience that kind of drives those numbers. We've done further research of our own. That was from Oxford University. We've done further uh, research, um, which, which shows that um, uh, there are uh, you know, so a number of other gaps, gaps of kind of appearing in, in, in the best and the worst of, of digital employee experience. Um, so we interviewed about 600 people around the world. Um, and we went for C-level, IT leaders and employees and compare and contrast the different perspectives. And, and that's really where this digital divide kind of came in. Um, so we look at this, this uh, in, in essence, let's look at the headline. So the digital divide is between what IT believes it's delivering and what employees and C-level are actually experiencing. So IT said that 60% of them rate their digital employee experience as good. Whereas the employees and C level said, "Not no, don't agree with that." It's actually thirty six percent of them said it was good. So quite a quite a significant gap between the two the two players. Um, so and it's not really surprising, really, because IT really lacks visibility. They can, you can only see what you could you can only fix what you can see, right? So only one in ten issues are reported to IT. That number varies between one in seven and one in ten, but whatever it is, it's a big number that are not being reported to IT. And so there's this real underlying issue that IT can't really get their arms around or understand what digital employee experience is because they can't see it. The only metric they've got is how many tickets am I getting and how many issues am I seeing. So below the waterline in on the iceberg you've got all kinds of issues that are never visible because they never get uh, reported or tracked by IT because they just don't have the tools or the capability to do that. Now, when you start to kind of look at this, this gap um, and then you start asking C-level people what they think could, uh, how their, their bottom line of their businesses be improved by significantly improving digital employee experience, the numbers are significant. And they were say they told us that a twelve percent revenue increase was possible with better digital employee experience. They could reduce costs by eighteen percent and uh, could get fourteen percent improvement in productivity, focusing just on digital employee experience. So this was a significant kind of number. If you turn that into just for just for giggles, let's turn that into a uh, a number. We'll just look at the the global fortune five hundred. That works out to be a four trillion dollar improvement in revenue uh, across those 500 companies just by improving digital employee experience. So now clearly there are challenges, there's a gap, and I think the current pandemic situation has really just made things worse and much more visible as an issue uh, at, at sea level uh, within an organization. And this is going to continue because we're going to be working in a hybrid world. It looks like sort of going forward. So we asked uh, 
uh, the uh, IT leaders and C-level, you know, what is, what is your current mix of remote versus hybrid versus office-based workers? And it's about 40% remote still today. Um, and 34% have gone back to the office and, and about a quarter are kind of doing a bit of both. And then what, what do we, they expect that to be once we kind of get, get outside of the, 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 the worst of the pandemic situation? And they still anticipate that um, uh, 15% will be working totally remote. Uh, 48% will be back in the office, so about half back in the office full time. And then 37% will still be doing a hybrid role. So, you know, a few days uh, in, in the home office and, and, and uh, the rest in the office. So that's, that means that this, this, the challenges of being uh, remote you know, really start to, to kick in. And uh, so we asked them, well, what are the top issues that you see with this remote working uh, style? And there's, there's kind of top 10 was quite interesting lists of and a mix of, of things um and you know there were some uh one of the top top ones there from the sea level was more distractions so you're at home and you're more likely to go off and play with a cat or um get get yourself you know have a long lunch break or something than you are if you're in an office environment um and there were other other kind of management concerns there in terms of engagement collaboration you know harder to meet business goals but digital experience issues, you know, IT issues were in the spotlight there. So obviously, you know, collaboration tools, um, security issues, internet connectivity, big issue um, when you're working from home and you're sharing the internet bandwidth with your kids and, and, your, and your family. Um, VPN issues, getting to the corporate network in a secure way, and then help desk ability to actually respond to issues and, and be able to get help to, to the users when they were working remotely outside of the office context. So some real real sort of challenges. Um, and our research shows that there is a consensus between the C-level, the IT leaders and employees. There's now a consensus that digital employee experience is, is now a priority. So 90% of C-level say that digital employee experience is now a medium or high priority. Prior to the pandemic, 72% said it was medium or low. Uh, so it's really swung in, in, in the direction of being a high priority for the sea level right now. IT, uh, sorry, employees, 93% say that improvement is needed. So, you know, big, big focus from their, their perspective. And then the IT leaders, about 67% of them say that uh, digital employee experience is a critical priority. So there's, there's the three groups agree on this much. Um, uh, but nevertheless, when you ask the question, well, how many of you are actually measuring digital employee experience? Only 50% of sea levels say that, say that they are actually measuring it and 50% are saying they're not measuring it. So there's a real gap here. There's a visibility gap and that creates a blind spot. And there are consequences to that blind spot. Um, firstly, you know, IT can only fix what they can see, right? Where, you know, they have to be able to have an issue defined so they can go running after it to fix it. So um, they can only fix what they can see. Also, without being able to understand patterns and, and uh, see what is impact the users and having analytical approaches to that, it's much harder for IT to actually fix the issues. They don't have enough data. Therefore, they need more IT staff to be able to handle those issues uh, and get to the bottom, bottom root cause as quickly as possible. IT also lacks, without this kind of being able to measure digital employee experience, they lack the data to be able to drive cost savings. If you're trying to manage the estate of an end user compute device, um, how do you know what the right, the right devices are to buy? You're just gonna have to buy the, the most expensive, highest spec device that you can. So being able to drive that um, uh, and, and kind of get to the point where uh, you're actually uh, you know, sort of focusing on the right devices for the right users. You, you don't have that visibility to be able to make those decisions. Um, obviously, the obvious consequence as well is that end users complain loudly to management, and that's not good for IT's reputation or standing in an organization. And then more importantly, from a bottom line perspective, customer service, the ability to recruit and employee retention suffer. Uh, because people vote with their feet. Bad digital experience, that means I can't get my job done. Uh, I can't be effective, therefore I'm gonna find somewhere where I can. 
Uh, and so retention, employee retention, uh, uh, it becomes a challenge. So let's think about, yeah, and, and we're in this sort of bring into, into the focus here is, is what we do as an organization, which is being able to help organizations through this, this kind of blind spot. And there is a journey uh, kind of underway here, and it's kind of moving from the old world, which is very reactive. So it's, it's measuring customer experience using number of tickets submitted and how quickly we respond to those tickets um, and maybe customer satisfaction surveys, you know, user satisfaction surveys every, every now and then. Um, but it's very reactive and it's, and it's as you say, only 10% only of the issues out there are actually ever being reported. So you're, you're, you're kind of not really seeing the full picture. So moving to the new world, which is being proactive and, and kind of actually being able to understand quickly what is going on across the entire estate and focus on the most important issues that deliver the best benefit to to the users so that involves monitoring lots of data being able to get a full picture of what is happening from the user's perspective deriving from that insight so being able to you know, look at the patterns put in place action plans to fix those things maybe even automation to, to th fix things automatically or provide the service desk with the ability to fix things when they occur using, using automation to speed, speed up that, that uh, resolution uh, and, and helping with the transformation going and, and going full circle continuously. So that's the journey that, that uh, we take our customers on, moving from reactive to proactive uh, in the way in which you know, they manage IT. And that's really where our, our SysTrack platform comes in. It's a digital experience platform and it, and it brings to the table uh, intelligent dashboards so you can understand where you need to focus time, effort, money to fix uh, user experience issues, understand what, uh, what, you know, where, where this is going to be predictive and to be proactively act accordingly. You, we provide kind of AI ops tools to you know, automate detection on the endpoint of issues, flag those up to, uh, to so you can start to look at patterns uh, and, and see which issues are starting to occur, correlate that with all the different changes and things that are going on in the environment continuously. Also a complete remediation and automation platform, so allow users to fix things for themselves, self-heal, uh, mass heal, being able to deploy automation across a, an estate, uh, an end user computer estate. And then auto healing, which is the ultimate, where the SysTrack uh, uh, detects the issue on the endpoint and, and applies the fix automatically without intervention from, from anyone else. The ability to, the other aspect of this is being able to interact with the user. So be able to you know, suggest ways in which they can improve their own, their own health score, uh, be able to, uh, you know, things they can do themselves as well as being able to nudge behavior in, in a particular direction to, to improve you know, the way they're using tools or, or, or you know, kind of reducing the number of issues by you know, the right behavior, um, as well as being able to understand the different users and personas in the organization. So you can then be very, very clever about how you apply service and deliver service, the best possible service to the right, the right user profile. And finally, being able to uh, you know, Systrex provide the way to integrate with ITSM tooling so that you put it in the hands of your service desk teams uh, across all the different levels with relevant tools that help them speed up the process of diagnosing. You know, when you do have a ticket, how, you know, how quickly can we actually resolve that issue? And we provide tools to give them the data so they can actually uh, fix the issue much more quickly from within the, you know, the service now, uh, GUI or, 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 or independent. So that's kind of a bit of an overview of, of, of what we do as a company. It's, it's a SysTrack digital experience platform. So let's understand a little bit about how that platform actually works. What does this actually involve? So everything starts with the endpoint, right? So this is, this is the most important aspect of, uh, uh, of the tooling and then being able to actually put a piece of software onto that endpoint, regardless of what, what it's running. So Windows, Mac, Mac OS, Android, iOS, whatever, you know, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter what it is. We, we, we have an agent that, that, that can sit on that agent. It works regardless whether or not the users are online. 
offline, remote. Um, uh, so it's it's uh, always always connected back to to your end, your end user experience platform um, and whatever form factor the user is using, uh, be that physical or virtual desktop. Um, so we support all the all the uh, the, the VDI platforms out there uh, in native in native mode. So you have an endpoint uh, agent. Uh, that agent is uh, is the piece that it can interact with the user and capture survey information. It can can interact and suggest uh, self healing. It can it can nudge them in a particular direction. So that whole interaction software we we're talking about. So that's one thing the agent does. The other thing is the agent is constantly collecting data. We've got about ten thousand data points that's collected in every few, a few seconds. It can be done in an anonymized uh, fashion or, or, uh, or connected with the user's name. But that, that essentially what the agent is doing is then evaluating using the sensors that we provide. And there's about, about a thousand of those out of the box and they're continuously adding to those. And those sensors are detecting what's happening on that endpoint, analyzing the data, analyzing what's normal for that user, telling you where, where how that kind of fits, uh, fits in with the overall context for the user's issues. And that's all visible to IT through through the cloud platform that we provide. We can also do this on premise, so we're not just limited to our cloud platform. But most of our customers are going cloud these days. So that's what the the, the agent is doing as part of the the, the overall architecture. That at the core is integration through a, a fully open API into whatever other tools that you use. Um, so we have integrations built out that built uh, out of the box. Uh, but you can build your own integration into your own tooling and so on through our uh, totally open API. So that's the kind of the way in which it works, and and uh, it's as simple as spinning up a uh, a new tenant in our multi-tenant cloud platform. We have uh, uh, hosting in Germany, US, Australia, Japan, Canada, and we're adding adding uh, uh, other other countries as well. Uh, you spin up a tenant, and then that gives you a, a unique agent, which you can then push out across all your different platforms. Uh, and then, as soon as the agent's uh, deployed, it's collecting a, a information and reporting back to uh, back to the cloud or to your central server if you're using an on-prem prem model. So um, that's that's kind of how how we with the platform rolls out. Our, our customers, you know, we did some surveying of our customers and, and understanding what's most important to them and, and what benefits they see. And as you can see, there's a kind of a raft of different issues, but obviously top of list there is root cause analysis and prevention capability, uh, being able to reduce the volume of, in, of IT incidents and tickets. Um, IT automation is up there as well, being able to understand the remote working uh, scenarios and being able to root cause analysis those and so on. So a whole range of different things at the bottom there, you've got reducing costs for, for, for IT. So a range of different uh, aspects. So let's just kind of summarize what our customers sort of see um, benefits from a digital employee experience management platform. Employee experience is obviously number one, that's top of the tree, uh, being able to really understand and therefore remediate and manage employee experience and close that digital divide that we were talking about earlier. Um, being able to, you know, IT then gets the benefit of having real granular data to plan uh, you know, their workplace uh, future. Uh, you know, so they have all the data they need to be able to make the right choices about whether or not they change hardware platforms, devices, move to virtual desktop infrastructure, or move back from virtual desktop to infrastructure to physical. We're seeing that as well in a, in a lot of cases here. IT also gets the benefit from service desk, improving service desk operations, making them more efficient, being able to move to being proactive, so preventing tickets in the first place by getting full visibility of the estate. And then finally, the business gets benefit from, from um, uh, management. So understanding which devices need to be uh, you know, refreshed, which devices can be, the life can be extended because they're delivering good service to that user already, uh, as well as being able to, able to manage uh, license, license uses across the estate by really understanding how much time the user actually spends in that application. I don't just mean application is now open, it's application is now in focus for that user on their device. So uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about you know, the real world here. That's, you know, that's what uh, the, the sort of survey data gave us. I think there are some you know, real life 
uh, use, use case stories out there. Hopefully you're able to attend the uh, Relex session early with Greg Dolphin talking about how they're moving from uh, a, a reactive to proactive support model. But uh, there are, there are, we've got lots of customers, all shapes and sizes and industries that are getting the benefit uh, from getting the visibility of what their user experience score is, being able to quickly um, you know, improve that by focusing in on the right issues to make the best possible impact on, on those users. So that's you know, kind of a little bit about, uh, you know, there are lots of other customer case studies that we can talk about, but hopefully give you a bit of a, a sense of, of the kind of improvements in productivity, but also the savings that users are, uh, users are making using our digital plat experience platform. Just, uh, you may not have heard of us before, just to put us in context um, uh, in this space. So the digital, uh, uh, Forrester calls it the end user experience management, Gartner calls it digital experience monitoring. Um, but uh, Gartner named us a leader uh, in their new wave quadrant. Um, uh, so as you can see, there's just two players in the, in the leader quadrant. And we're, uh, we're at the top of the, uh, the offering kind of rating um, and we were differentiated in four out of eight criteria. So kind of very pleased with that outcome. But you can, you know, hopefully you can see that we're a trusted platform in the market and we've got uh, a lot of customers that are, are, are using us. So, uh, you know, very, very kind of uh, uh, cool uh, to, to see that, that, that coming through for us. Um, I just wanted to spend a little bit of time just showing you what the, the platform looks like before we just, uh, we just wrap up here. I, I realize I've been talking in, in hypothetical terms here, but let me just uh, uh, just bring in here a, um, uh, a dashboard that you can have a look at, so you can start to see the kinds of things that we're able to kind of give to our customers. So uh, on this dashboard, hopefully you kind of see this now. Um, the, the the focus here is on the different groups and, and communities within our organization. You can define groups based on any criteria that you you want to use. It could be device type, it could be location, it could be department, uh, uh, and the groups can overlap and be dynamic as well. So uh, so we can pick a different, a particular group, and, he, and here we're just looking at all systems, and then we can see the health score. So health score for all systems at the moment is 83. That means 17% impact on the user's time. So we look at the total active time for the user, and then measure all the different impact areas that are uh, causing causing that user to be less productive. And that that gives us the uh, the percentage, and that's a real time uh, metric. You can see it trended, as you can see here, and we can understand which categories are impacting those users right now. So, as you can see, uh, we've got a lot of people using virtualization platform. There's a lot of latency um, in this environment, so there's a lot of remote workers where latency becomes an issue. But there are some systems which have got CPU issues. So nine nine hours of impact, productivity impact there. Uh, storage impact of, of another eight hours and so on. So you can start to see how that user experience score calculates out. And I can select any group that I want to. Um, and we can see the user experience trended. Uh, I can start to see what are the active sensors going on in, in this particular environment right now. So there are lots of different different sensors that are firing that we can investigate uh, and, and kind of drill into to very quickly to, to resolve. I can see the score by day over the last 30 days and which areas of impact are causing them across all the different major categories that we're, that we're, we're measuring impact in. And I, if I want to, I can get right down to the machine level within our group and see which are the, the systems that are having the worst time and, 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 and investigate those in more detail. Um, so uh, it's been lovely to spend more time. We're happy to do demos. Uh, for you, just let us know, uh, get in contact and we'll uh, arrange a demo for you. Um, but yeah, thank you very much indeed for that. So let me just sort of wrap um, uh, uh, kind of back to, to our slides here, um, just to sort of as a summary. Um, if we look at uh, areas that our customers benefit from, they really allow them to focus on digital experience as a core part of a core um, uh, competency within their IT organization. They are able to eliminate uh, user experience blind spots that we were talking about earlier through all the visibility of the data that we provide. We had a shift from reactive to proactive um, uh, uh, IT operations uh, and, and save money and, and improve user experience all at the same time. And then finally, being able to drive transformation through having having the right data at your fingertips to make the right decisions 
across all of your uh, users' devices. But uh, so, thank you very much indeed for for your time uh, on this session, um, and, uh, and and back to the studio for, uh, for for the next stage. Thank you.